What's up, guys? I'm BTC. Blizzard just released a bunch of information about Overwatch 2. This was in the form of a 45-minute video that had about four minutes worth of content. So I'm going to trim out all the extra garbage and just tell you the important stuff. Also, side note, I don't know why Blizzard has been doing this lately. They do it for other games, too, where they have a fake interview between Blizzard employees. Like, they have one employee pretending to not know and asking other employees to get the answer and they try to make it look like a real conversation but it doesn't at all and it takes twice as long as it probably should in order to get the information out and it's also really dumb and cringe and they should stop doing it anyways getting on to the information so october 4th is the release date for overwatch 2 there will be three new heroes sojourn junker queen and a new support which is probably going to be that fox character that we saw teased in the previous video and also there are going to be six new maps that get released with that on October 4th. And one of them is going to be a new map called Portugal, which we just saw. I got some screenshots of it. It looks pretty good. It's going to be a push map. And that leads into the next thing, which is the new game mode push, which everybody has already been aware of for like <laughs> three years or something new, quote unquote. Anyways. Also, keep in mind, though, that there is another new game mode that we haven't seen yet. It's already done. They already have it completely finished, and they have maps for it already because they originally designed some of these maps to be the two capture point maps, but when they got rid of that, they completely redesigned that game mode to something else that we don't know and we've never seen or heard anything about yet. We, we know it exists because Aaron Keller actually admitted that it does exist, but we haven't seen it yet. So anyways. There's going to be the new push mode, and that's on October 4th. There's going to be 30 new skins. Hopefully, most of them aren't palette swaps like what we've been getting. But 30 new skins, and also something called a Mythic skin. Now, this is almost certainly going to be part of the Battle Pass system, and I believe the first one is going to be for Genji. And what this is going to be is essentially a customizable skin. So it's supposed to be something a little bit beyond Legendary. So imagine a Legendary quality skin that you can kind of customize. So you can change the helmet, you can change like the way the, you know, the chest armor or the leg armor, you can change some colors, maybe change a little bit of design here and there. And that is going to be the mythic skin. So it's not just a single skin, it's something that you can actually customize even further. Now, I don't know how much customization there's going to be. There might be, it, from the images, it looked like there might be at least four or five things that you can actually customize on the character. So that's a pretty significant new skin to make it a little bit beyond legendary. Also, there's going to be more characters, and what they're planning to do is have a new character every other season and a new map every other season. So you're going to have, for December 6th, there's going to be another character that gets released. This is going to be a tank hero. We don't know who this is. It might be MAGA. Who knows? And there's also going to be a new map that gets released, another 30 skins, another mythic skin, and a new battle pass. So this is basically what it's going to be. Every couple months, they're going to release a whole bunch of new content. And, you know, the first one is going to be new character. The next one is going to be a new map. The next one is going to be a new character, that sort of thing. So they have said that they want to release a lot more characters, but... It doesn't look like it's going to be, you know, one a month or nothing like that. It's probably going to be one new character every three or four months or so. It's likely going to go back to what it originally was. When Overwatch first was getting released and they were releasing, you know, three or three new characters a year. Basically is probably what it, what's going to happen. For 2023, they just have, you know, kind of a generic thing like, oh, there's going to be new heroes and new maps and new modes and blah, blah, blah. hundred new skins. Yeah, but that's for the whole year. And also, the PvE, the cooperative game mode, is going to be released in 2023. So, we're not getting that for the rest of the year. Now, some other things that they talked about was the Junker Queen character. So, we got some new cinematics and stuff for her, and they revealed her backstory. Basically, she was kicked out of Junkertown by the Junker King, and she came back and she wanted to make things better and 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 so she took over and then she kicked him out as like kind of you know revenge right which kind of makes sense okay but then i have to wonder why did she kick junkrat and roadhog out as well right <laughs> so like her entire backstory and this is this is why i say the 
the Overwatch story is garbage because the writers just don't really think about this sort of stuff. Her entire backstory consists about getting kicked out of Junkertown and being forced to survive on her own. And so what does she do? She kicks Junkrat and Roadhog out, right? So it's like you're doing the same thing. You're doing the exact same thing that we're, you know, we're supposed to feel bad for you because you got kicked out with your family and now you're doing the same thing to other people. Again, the writers just don't think ahead. Anyways, so we got that. And uh, more importantly about the character is we learned a little bit more about the abilities. So funny enough, and I kind of thought about this, but I, I in the, the other video that I made about Junker Queen, where I was like, you know, that weapon she has, it kind of looks like it pulls the enemy towards you. And that would be kind of like Roadhog's hook. But I thought that, no, there's no way they would do that. I mean, there's no way they would just, you know, basically give another tank a hook mechanic. And that's exactly what they did. <laughs> exactly what they did. Now, it doesn't quite do the same thing because it doesn't really stun them, but it still pulls them forward and it applies a kind of wounding, which apparently is, it, it seems to be like it's a damage over time and it, and possibly it might have an anti-heal effect to it. Her ultimate, which is actually the thing that we saw where she kind of spins and winds up and dashes forward, which I thought that was incredibly lackluster when I saw that. I thought that was a normal ability to, to learn that that's the ultimate. It seems just, I don't know, not very, not very um, exciting, I guess. But I suppose the abilities, uh, the you know, the the aspects of the ultimate are a little more important because... She deals damage, and it applies this wounding, this kind of damage over time, it seems, but it also applies a 100% anti-heal to everybody that you hit. And we don't know exactly how long it's going to last, but that's huge. So we now have another character that is applying 100% anti-heal. Granted, it's on her ultimate, and I've talked about this before. I think that the game does need more anti-healing, but not 100% anti-healing. 100% anti-healing is dumb and it's frustrating for the support characters because suddenly you just can't do your job. Like if your entire team gets hit with an anti-heal, you just basically sit there and wait for it to end. Like that's stupid, it's annoying. So having things that are more like a 30% anti-heal or a 50% anti-heal, that makes sense because you can still do your job, but it's just not quite as effective. So that, I don't, I don't, I don't like the idea that it has a 100% anti-heal, but anyways. So she also has the axe, which is just a, you know, uh, it's like it's a normal close range ability. She doesn't actually switch or anything like that. There's no like stance changes or anything. She also has a shout, which is basically her defensive ability. It seems to increase the defensive ability, the armor of everybody in the area. And this is almost certainly just going to be in the form of some sort of uh, bonus health. Like, they've basically changed all the bonus health in Overwatch 2 to just one thing, which is just that little green bar now. Like, you don't have extra armor or extra shields or none of that stuff. It's just that one over health. So that's what it looks like what's going to be doing. And also, with her uh, quick melee... She does a little bit more damage than normal because I guess she's using a knife and that's the thing that you can also throw using your right click and that will now function as Roadhog's hook. So you can quick melee with it and deal a little bit more damage or you can throw it and then pull someone towards you. Uh, again, I don't, it, don't, it doesn't look like it does a stun or anything, but regardless, it's, <laughs> I just think it's funny because they're like... Because during, you know, during the interview, though, we wanted to make a completely original character. So we gave her Roadhog's hook. It's like, come on. I mean, it's not, it's not like it's a terrible ability or anything, but, you know, it's, it's not exactly original. Anyways. So they also added that there's going to be a bunch of new emotes and stuff and more extra things for you to spend real money on because they're getting rid of loot boxes entirely and the game is going free to play it's going to be a battle pass system and they're going to have rewards that get unlocked all the time and again 
just like with any battle pass system, right? You can get normal rewards as you play the game each week. You'll get a little bit of rewards, but if you want to get the good stuff, you got to fork over some real money and get the battle pass and then you'll get the the other stuff unlocked. Also, uh they have so there's going to be these little things kind of like I forget what they're oh, man, I can't for the life of me remember what they're called. Uh, but basically little attachments to your weapons and stuff. So you can just have whatever, right? Like they showed Symmetra with like a little donut that's attached to her weapon and whatnot. So you can have those. And they also mentioned, because this is ties into the, the other thing, which is they have a new store, which is basically just going to be all micro microtransactions. So there's going to be a ton, a ton, a ton, ton of microtransactions that get added to this game. I know everybody's excited for that one. And... I think that's mostly it that covers, uh, I think, most everything that they've uh, that they went through. And we can expect the oh, yeah, there is one one other thing. The new beta, which is going to be coming up at the end of June, uh, will include console players. So I think this is the first time that they've ever had a PTR for console players or any sort of, you know, testing for console players. So if you play on console Now's your time, and Junker Queen will be available during that play test as well. So there you go, guys. That is pretty much everything of importance that they talked about in that 40-plus minute video. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. A big thanks to all the Paragons and other channel members for all your support. If you'd like to become one and grab some cool rewards, click the join button down below. And remember, always, always blame the controller because it's never your fault.